Wolf here with another video and today we're going to take a look at the Analog Pocket, an FPGA based emulation system. Um, it does all sorts of handheld gaming devices like the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Advance, Neo Geo Pocket and whatnot. And what it also does, it comes pre-installed with a copy of Nanoloop, a music sequencing software um, that we're going to take a look at together. So if you're like a total beginner with it and usually your jams sound somewhere like this, we're going to change that today. I'm going to switch up the camera angle a bit so you're going to have a closer look at the display and then I'm going to walk you all the way through from, you know, getting started, the basics, the layout, how it all works, and we're going to end up with something that sounds a little bit like... So, if that sounds interesting to you, let's get started. Oh, and a side note, if you happen to use Nanoloop 2 for the Game Boy Advance, this tutorial works just as well for you, because basically it is the same layout the same sound engines, the same structure. So, yeah, let's dive on in. Okay, here we go. This is the starting screen of Nanoloop 2, or Nanoloop Pocket, or whatever you want to call it. Um, you will sometimes hear a beeping sound, even if you've paused it. I'm going to show you how to pause it in a second. Normally, if you start it for the first time, um, it will be just running through, right? Um, I'm pausing it for now, and we're going to go over the menus in a second. For now, what is Nanoloop? Nanoloop is both a sequencing software, but also a synthesizer. It has four channels, so you have the ability to run four different sounds at the same time and sequence them individually. Um, the four channels are, um, you can see what channel you're on on the top left corner. So right now I'm at the R channel. There's the L channel, the S channel and the N channel. R is nice for all sorts of things like leads, bass, bass drums. Um, same for L. S is pretty nice for chords, and N is a noise channel, so you get a lot of stuff out of it that is suitable for percussive elements, for example, or hi-hat snares, you know, that sort of thing. So if you've noticed, I'm browsing through the different channels by going up and down on my D-pad here. To get into the menu, I'm pressing that button here the select button if you're on the Game Boy Advance. Here it's not labeled, but let's refer to this one as the select button. This is the start button. You're going to need both of them. So the basic idea of it is that there are 16 steps and Nanoloop cycles through those steps um, from the top left corner, it goes through each row one by one and then it starts again at the beginning. I'm going to place just four notes now. Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you how to place those notes and then um, we'll take a closer look at how the sequence works. So by pressing select once or twice I can browse through two menus. You see the icons on the bottom, they're changing. And this, mm, this row of icons is um, of more significance for us at the moment because this is where all the musical stuff is happening. With the D-pad, left and right, we're browsing through the icons and we're choosing, you know, what, mm, what aspect of our sequence uh, we're influencing next. So for now, I'm choosing the note symbol because I want to place some notes. With the 
let me think, the B button, I get out of the menu, and now I'm in the sequencer where I can move this white square around um, so I can place notes. If I press the B button again, I place a note. If I press the A button, I'll also play, uh, place a note. The difference is the A button has a copy function that we're going to look at in a bit. And the B button is like placing a new neutral note, like any time. So, as you can see, I placed four notes, each on the beginning of a, of a new row. And when I play now, um, to access the play function, I'm pressing select again, get into the menu, press select another time for the second um, row of, of icons. And the one on the bottom right is the start button and pause button. It's also um, interesting if you want to sync up your nano loop to other devices. And, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just start the loop with B. So, you hear? One, two, three, four, and it starts from the beginning. We are at 120 BPM. If we want to change that, we hold the B button and we press left and right to decrease or increase the BPM. It doesn't go by increments of one. Sometimes it's like one, sometimes it skips by two. I don't know why that is, but that's just how it is. And we'll have to accept that, I guess. I'm going to stick at 120 BPM for now. Okay, by now this sound is starting to annoy us, so let's try and transform it into something that is a bit more fun. Press the select button again and go to the note symbol again. But this time we are not going to go out of the menu, instead we're going to hold B and keep it pressed, and then we press the D-pad left, and we change the notes one octave down. So that is the cool thing. Once you have a few notes placed down, you can access all of them at once with your outside menu. I can do so on a per step basis, so I'm going back in, select a note that I want to change, hold the B button, press left, and it shifted an octave. By pressing up and down, I'm going to do half tones, semitones. Okay. Now they're all at a lower bassy um, setting. Select again. And I'm going to pitch them down even further. Uh, Okay, this is starting to sound like, you know, like a nice bass sound. Maybe it's a bit short, so we can make those sounds longer by accessing the icon on the bottom left. This is like the envelope of a sound, you know, where it starts and then where the volume fades. So as you can see, at each of these um, placed notes, it starts loud and then it fades to zero within a relatively short amount of time. Again, if I press the B button and, for example, press right, the notes are getting longer or super short. If I press down, they get super quiet. If I press up, they get loud again. And again, I can do it on a per step basis as well. Always exit the menu with the B button, select one of the notes you want to change or mess with. So far, so good, right? Now here's another interesting thing. If you want to manipulate your sound even further, this time we're going to press the A button and keep it pressed. 
and pressed the D-pad up and we reversed the attack curve of the sound. So it starts at zero and then it goes up to full volume. So it's like a reverse sounding note. Again, we can make it shorter or longer. And we can reverse that by holding A and pressing down. Nice. So this is like a good start, you know, for a bass melody, for example, or what we are going to do now, we're going to turn this into a really nice sounding kick drum. One of my favorite things to do in Nano Loop. Okay, select again. This time we're going to go for the middle icon. Now, this one might be a little tricky to understand at first, but there's a ton of amazing stuff you can do with it. Okay, we're going to exit the menu by B, by pressing B. Don't worry about what I'm doing right now, just making sure every step looks the same. Oh, by the way, this might come in handy at one point. If you feel like you've messed up a note, you know, too much and you can't get back to what it originally was, but you have another instant of it that sounds the way you want it to, you can always do something like this. Let's say I've messed this one totally up. Ah, it sounds weird now. Okay, pressing A deletes the note. But it also puts it in a in a copy um, buffer, you know. It's like it's like um, using Control X on a keyboard, I would say. Now I do the same thing with the first note. I press A again, so I paste the note. It's still in my buffer, and I can paste it here as well. It's a nice way to make sure, like, for example, if you just tweak one note and then you think to yourself, oh, I want, it, I want to copy that note somewhere, this is how you would do it. Now, um, if you remember looking at the volume, that this represents the attack of the volume, the attack and decay. This does the same thing, but this time it's for the pitch of the note. So, we hold the B button, press up again, and we move the left of the two squares. And you can hear... The sound starts at the much higher pitch, and then pitches down. And um, if I space those two boxes out, it takes longer, for the pitch to go down and this way it goes shorter and maybe you can already hear the short attack gives it this kick, kick drum sound so we're making the attack even shorter now okay sounds nice let's go even deeper. Mm. So I pitched it down another octave. And I play around with it a bit. Oh, okay, this sounds nice. Now maybe you sort of like the sound, but it's not quite there yet. We have another option to tweak it even further. And this is the filter. So there are um, different kind of filters or ways to shape the sound. For now, let's just say that this little square here represents um, a filter setting on an X and Y axis um, with cutoff and resonance. So you can easily find out how it, um, how it influences your sound by just holding B again and moving, moving it around.
so moving it up this cutoff and moving it to the right its resonance so keeping it kind of kind of low and kind of to the left is a good point um, for a nice kick drum if you if you prefer a longer um, a longer attack or you can get you know these sort of laser sounds but let's keep it let's keep it classy and techno here for now okay right Okay, now we've made a nice percussive element that serves as like our four to the floor. And now let's make a simple bass line to go along with it. So like I told you in the beginning, after we press select and we're in these menus, we can change what channel we're on by pressing up and down. So I'm going to go to the L channel now. You can hear that the kick drum pattern is still going on in the background. B to get to the pattern here. And I'm going to start with a fresh note and not one, I don't want to, you know, copy uh, the values of some of the bass drum notes. So I'm going to press B and it starts with a middle C, right? Um, Let's make a very basic bass line that is like on the offbeat. So it's on every third square of each row. It's like... This is also a good place for a hi-hat, for example, if you want to do some techno stuff. Select. I want to pitch it down a bit. Okay, this is nice. Longer. And play around with the filter. Now, if you find yourself getting bored of that filter, you can change it by holding the A button and pressing right. And then it's sort of like a high pass filter. It has a much more nasal and tinny sound to it, you know? Maybe nice for a lead. But for me, I want to stick to the other filter. Okay, something like that. Let's try and make it a bit more intricate and getting in there. I am copying a note by pressing A, pressing A again to paste it. And okay. And maybe here. Ah. Okay. Why not? Still a bit too high for my bass line, so I'm going to pitch it down another octave. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I'm selecting the first icon again, because I want to reverse one of the notes. Make it a bit longer. Okay, this one a bit shorter.
Now, you might think to yourself, okay, this is nice and all, but it's starting to get a bit repetitive, right? And it might, but we have more ways to change that. Okay, we're going to press shoulder button now, while we're on a note, and press right. And what happened now is, this note is going to play only on every second loop. Let's take a listen. If I do it again, it will also only play once every twice loop, uh, every second loop, but it has a different starting point. So if I press right one more time, you see that only one square of it remains visible. That means it plays on the first loop and then it won't play for three loops and then the sound plays again. Okay, makes it more interesting because things are getting, you know, less um, predictable, less repetitive. You can make steps that only sound one in every four loops, one in every twice, every two loops, and that combined makes for something that, you know, sounds fresher and more interesting. Okay, sounds good. Now we take another look at this one here, you know, remember, it influences the pitch. This setting can also be changed in another way. This time we're holding A again and we press up. And as you can see now we have a line and a little square. And this is to give it a sort of tremolo effect. This is maybe mm, more audible if we use a higher pitch, so I'm going to do that just for the sake of demonstrating it. Here the sound gets sort of wobbly. to do that like just a just a tiny bit to give it that sort of wobbly tape aesthetic for example there's a ton of things you can do to switch back to the way it behaved before just hold a and press down on the d-pad and we're back to the pitch thing so both of these settings influence the pitch, obviously, but one does it like in a linear way and one in a repetitive way where the frequency will go up and down, up and down, um, depending on how you set it up. Okay, changing the pitch back down. Let's say, for example, I'm starting to get annoyed of this. I don't want to hear the bass drum all the time while I'm playing around with my kick drum. Press select, press up, so this is the kick drum pattern. We're holding A and start, and we mute it. We go down to our L channel, we do the same thing, silence. Now. This might not be very useful while you're composing because obviously you want to hear what's going on so you can place your notes accordingly and make intricate patterns or, you know, interesting sound sculptures or whatever you feel like achieving with your nano loop session. But um, it's a nice thing, 
you know, to play around with when you're doing a live performance, when you're jamming with it, when you have a few patterns set up and you want to take things out and in again mute the channel just for a bit or, you know, take the kick drum pattern out and just bring it back in before the last count, something like that. It can, you know, bring a world of change into your jams. So for now, I'll unmute it again and let's take a look at the next channel, the noise channel. Select, we're in the note section again, B, and oh yeah, we got a nice techno groove going on, right? This is already pretty awesome. But let's make things even more interesting and I'm going to introduce some new um, some new aspects of our UI that we haven't talked about yet. For example, the last icon on the first row of, of the menu. This section here does two things. For one, you can change the panning of your notes. Press B and left. B and right. B and left. B and right. So now we have a nice stereo effect going on. Awesome. I want to make those a little more quiet and this one a little longer. Maybe every second one is a bit longer. Now if we go back to the tool that we just used for penning and we hold the A button and press and again <laughs> and press up, we change where the note starts. Now this might be a little hard to hear without uh, more context, so I'm going to place four notes here. So you can hear this note, it's getting pushed to the right, so it starts later. This might be nice if you, for example, want to give it more of a groove or a wonky feel. But you can also do another thing with it, and this time we're pressing A and down. I'm going to delete the other ones. You see the white line that appear? This is a delay. And now I can affect the delay by holding B and pressing up and down, make it shorter. to get it started, but, you know, pressing B and up, and then A and down. <laughs> but yeah, this is starting to sound really nice, right? So maybe we want to save the pattern now, because we're like, oh, we're going somewhere, and we don't want to lose it. Select. Select again. This time we're going to choose the first icon, press B. And this is the menu where we save everything. So we have banks. Don't worry about those too much for now. The more important thing is these rows and columns. So here you see every channel that we have, L, R, S and N. And these are the, how do I put that best? And these are the save slots for each of those channels. So if I press B and down, I save the R channel. If I press L and down, oh, sorry. If I go down, press B, down again, I save the L channel. The S channel is empty so far, no need to save it. And the M, so now they're saved. I loaded an empty 
pattern now. You don't hear anything. And by pressing B and up, I do load the channel again. There's an easier way to do this. If you want to save everything at once, you hold the A button and press down and all four channels are saved. And the same way if you want to load them. So for demonstration purposes, loading up a column of empty channels and loading up the patterns we've been working on. Nice! So this is also a great option if you want to start to further expand on your patterns. So you just save a copy of them and now you tweak them, you mess around with them, you do whatever you want. And if you feel you've gone overboard, well just restore your backup copy of that pattern and try again. Or you may have come up with a nice variation and one by one you start adding patterns and sooner or later you'll end up with a full track. So select again, we're back at the beat. This time we're going for the S channel because while this is sounding nice already, we want to add some chords on top of it. So remember, this one here was good for stopping and starting again, but it also does another thing. Like we said before, holding B, pressing L, L and R, uh, left and right, sorry, is going to slow down the pattern, speed it up again. But if I hold B and press down, I see this symbol here, you know, divided by two. And as you can tell, this pattern is now running slower than before. Well, I'll press B and up again. It's at regular speed. It's at half speed. I press down again. It's even at quarter speed. And the awesome thing about it is, the other patterns still running at the same tempo, but this one is running at a quarter speed. So it takes this pattern, or sorry, this channel four times as long to repeat, which means I can make a nice chord progression over four repetitions of the bass line. Let's, let's see how that turns out. Okay, choosing note again. B. And this time I'm pressing start. And this is the chord mode. So it starts out with a C, a middle C and no other sound again. If I hold B while I'm on that note, I can switch through those four numbers, right? By going right. Left. And I can increase and decrease those numbers with the D-pad pressing up and down. Let's make that sound last a bit longer. So for now it's playing a chord with two notes, right? A C and a Now it's playing the C and so for now it's playing a C and an F. So it's five semitones over the S uh, over the C. Let's bring that down to three. Let's add a third note. Alright, so we got a chord going, we could expand it even more, even further. Now I want to play with the filter a bit. Let's make four copies. So I told you before, if you press A and press right, 
we get another filter, right? But there are two other settings here as well. That is, we hold A and this time we press up. And this gives it more of an fm -y, tinny, metallic sound that I really like. If I press select, go in the, in the menu again, and hold B, I can edit all the notes at once again. And this filter can be changed again by holding A and pressing down. Oh, sorry. Right. Alright, so I guess I'll leave it at that for now. This should give you a nice start to get going. And if you have any questions that I haven't answered yet, if you want a more intricate tutorial, more in-depth, even more tips and tricks, please let me know in the comments. Subscribe to my channel. Give this video a friendly thumbs up, a like share it with your fellow analog pocketers and enjoy making music with this wonderful device and yeah go out there and create some chip tunes have a great day thanks <laughs>